So, hello again. And uh, this is uh, Rock and Roll Circus where I'm at the moment. As you might have guessed, this is not my house. I don't live here. Uh, this is where we record and rehearse for Helicopter Quartet. It's a small room in the rehearsal studio because there are only two of us in the band. And I'm going to test some violins here to see how well or badly they respond under feedback conditions. It's a small room, uh, so very prone to feedback. It's not quite square, but it's not far off. It's not, you know, the sides are too short of the other. So I've got four violins with me. The idea is not to decide which one is best as such, because obviously they all make very different sounds. They all sound very different. And they all have their own uses for various reasons. So just to see how well they respond under feedback. So one of the things you see really often in adverts for violins in particular, I don't know if this happens on any other instruments, electric violins, people are very fond of saying this violin will never feed back or it's very resistant to feedback. But I think anybody's ever tested it, so here I am. So I've got a picture of Sid Bowers on the wall there, I've got my GT1000 down here, and I've got an orange amp. This is not my amp, it belongs to the rehearsal studio. Uh, I do use it for rehearsing because I like it a lot. But uh, yeah, it's not what I usually what I usually use at gigs because I normally use the PA system or my AER. But I've got two cameras here and stuff, so I just have reduced the amount of stuff I'm carrying around with me. But anyway, it's a nice rehearsal. I've got four violins here. I have an actual acoustic violin here with a headway band pickup on it. Uh, other pickups may be better or worse than this one, but this is the one I have. So this is the one I'm testing. Sharper eyes will notice this is not my concert violin that I showed earlier. There's a different violin. Again, I'm trying to reduce the amount of massively expensive gear I'm carrying around. So this is just a um, German factory-made acoustic violin. It's quite nice though. Use it as a spare. Uh, I've got my bridge Lyra violin. The pickup on this is a proprietary design built into the bridge. Pizza. They're all pizza pickups of varying types, obviously. But, also, but it just depends where they're fitted and the body obviously has a great deal of effect on this as well. So this is the Violarama Sycorax 5-string electric violin. Nice acoustic -y sound. This has got a pickup on the sound post. Which is on the other side. There's a the sound post. I showed you it on the last video anyway. Pick up on the sound post so that's a bit of a different design. And finally here we have a Vector Prodigy Pro 6-string violin. This has got Barbera pickup on it, so that's a different thing altogether, so it's interesting to see what the different pickups are. I've also got a sound pressure level meter. I don't know whether that's going to be massively useful or not, but it's there, uh, just so that I can see what actual volumes I'm producing. Makes it look scientific, if nothing else. And also, massively important, I have ear protection. Never go anywhere without ear protection. I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to plug these things in and just see where they feed back on the clean setting on the GT1000. So there are no effects on the GT1000. So if I put the pedal down, it's tuning. I'm not playing it today, I'm just going to make loud noises with it. So. I'm just going to put it down here, and I'm going to turn the levels up and see what happens when, it, when I start making noises. making feedback noises. I've got the amp quite high. I hope we're staying quite close to the amplifier as well. But this, this, this is... <laughs> kind of recorded these, they're amazing noises. Uh, this is obviously going to be the worst. It's a hollow, you know, body. The design thing is designed to be a resident, so... What do you expect? I'm also, trying, I'm also listening out to the sort of sounds it makes, because some are worse than others. 
Uh, I can hear a snare drum passing on there, but I'm not going to worry about that because if you're playing in a band, you're probably going to have a snare drum there, so I'm not worried too much about that. This is the bridge. Don't use this so much anymore. So, again, it's enough, so not really very much feedback now if I just plug it in. So that's actually really good. I've got this full one now and it's just starting to come in now and squeal. I'm not playing any sound on this, so this is just going to be feedback from inside the room. I'll try it with the notes in a minute, but I didn't bother trying that with the acoustic because it was feedback almost immediately. So that's full on now and it's just come in and it's pretty easy to, to control it. I bring it near the amp. Massively, massively horrible skill there. But a bit further away, you, know, you can play that. I've got the chin rest on the shoulder. But... I'll put that back to where you would normally play it. That's, you know, you could have to play that quite happily. And I have done in quite small rooms. I guess I don't give me big holes to play in generally. So that's quite good. This is the panorama. Again, over there it's quite stable. Down there. You can hear the pick of the wheel there. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but some noise is picking up just down here. Noise. You get occasional squeal. Turn the pedal down so I don't deafen everybody. <laughs> so even with the strings damped, it's feeding back, which the bridge didn't. So if I damped all the strings on the bridge, I got nothing out of it, so that's interesting. Not entirely surprising, obviously, this is meant to be a resonant violin to give you that acoustic sound. Because uh, all these violins have got just sockets in different positions, which is great for trying to remember where they are. So I'll put this back up to there. And I'll hold it about here again. This is the vector. It's well way past the o'clock now. I hear a low hum coming through there a bit. Yeah, there's a low hum there coming through about. Yeah. I don't know if the meter's picking that up yet. Yeah, no, it's not. If I stop the strings on this, the feedback stops. Different feedback, different effects, different sound there. I love the different noise, noise notes you get out of this. I'm glad I'm recording this. <laughs> I'm gonna use them, use them in a piece sometime. That'd be fun. I'm gonna turn this light to follow where I had the bridge. Okay, with the fingers on the strings, again, that's quiet, it's not picking up much at all. Coming to 
is higher than that. It's quite a nice feedback effect though, because it's could use that as an acoustic coupling type effect like you do with a guitar actually, that's quite useful. That's on full, that's actually very impressive. So that's quite impressive actually. I think the order there is unsurprising. There's on two bridge mounted pickups performing the best in here and the two more microphonic pickups slightly worse. Okay, is it gonna get this is where it gets really loud. I'm gonna put some distortion on now. Now I tend not to use a lot of distortion when I'm playing these days uh, but lots of people do, it's quite a nice effect on a violin if you do it nicely. Uh, the distortion I've got on here is on the, uh, uh, is, uh, the warm overdrive and I've got some direct in there as well, I don't know if you can see that on the GoPro. I don't know, it gives you a, a more violin-y sound, so it doesn't sound so much like just... If you don't have that a bit of... <coughs> drive signal in there. <laughs> Plug that in. Then it sounds just like a guitar, and then what's the point of that? You've got a guitarist. So this is... Acoustic violin. So as soon as I turn the level up... I'll grab, I'm holding the strings quite, <laughs> quite tightly here. The feedback there is actually louder than the instrument. I can't hear the instrument at all. Again, nobody's going to be surprised by that, but it's it's worth our time. Bridge. <laughs> Quite a bit of feedback even now. I'm gonna troll rest on this a bit. Yeah, that's quite hard to control. Quiet until you actually play something. So as soon as you get, it's quiet there, even with my hand off the strings. Interestingly, I didn't expect that. It goes on for once you get the at tail, then you can stop that. It's to move it away from the amp. You can't stop it with the strings. Didn't expect that. That's interesting. So, Vinorama. on the strings it's stopped
reasonably enough, but it stops when I put my hands on the strings. That's really controllable. Go on. Yeah. And even doing that, it's actually quite hard to get to feedback without that. body instrument. I don't know how much the solid body is contributing along with the Barbera pickups. That's a thing we have to find out. But most Barbera pickup based violins tend to be solid body anyway as far as I can tell. We need to put a Barbera on one of the other instruments. I'm not doing that. That's a lazy job. <laughs> but that's very, yeah, okay. Very impressed with that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to use the distortion channel on the amp, so let's put the dirty channel on, turn that off, I've no idea what they sound like, I never use the dirty channel on amps to be honest, but people do, um, this is a really lovely amp so it'd be daft not to do it really wouldn't it? So. violin. That's not stopping, yeah. Nobody in their right mind would use one of these for a uh, a distortion, but hey, go try it. It's the control, it's the what control. I'm being scientific here, you know. <laughs> so I think. Disclaimer I'm not a scientist. and I have shoulder wrist, sorry. Surprisingly, that's a similar effect to using the, uh, the digital distortion in the GT1000. So you need to move the instrument away from the amp to get rid of just to get rid of the, uh, the feedback. It, I mean, the bridge is a hollow body, so this is only to be expected. You know, there's a lot of vibration that can go on in there. It's one of the reasons that makes it quite nice to play. I always found because it does feel quite like a violin while you're playing it. Once you've got the vibration into your shoulder. Under your, under your chin, shoulder, over your shoulder, under your chin. How do you play this instrument again? I, should, I knew I should know how to do it. Because 
Actually, it's quite a nice sound on that on that overdrive on that amp. It's very very guitar-y overdrive because there's no there's no wet control on most amps. It's just why well, guitarists tend not to use them. They're just like, hey, I want some distortion. So, was yeah. Anyway. There's nothing else to resonate, really, once you put the strings down. Unlike on pretty much all of the others, because the bridge, obviously, hollow carbon fibre Kevlar body, the Sikorax, there's a sound person there in a bass bar, they're all doing the resonating because they're trying to give you that sound. And obviously the acoustic is a deliberately resonant box, the whole, the whole point of the thing. So I think it's a solid, but I think the conclusion I get from this is that if you want to play a lot of heavily distorted violin music, get a solid body instrument. Possibly with a Barbera pickup. It would be interesting to try other solid body instruments with different pickups, but I just don't have them. Hell, I brought four violins in today and this is not all my collection. What do you want of me? I'm not going to rank them in order, you saw what happened there, they sound different, uh, they behave differently. Uh, I like the way the Sycorax behaves under distortion, it's got a really, it's got a lovely bite to it, it's one of the reasons I like that instrument, it's got the bite. If you want to play really loud, this is the thing to get. Uh, bridge is a nice sort of halfway house between the two. Uh, I'll be honest, if you looked, if you watched my Sycorax video, the bridge now sounds quite dull to me, it doesn't quite have the life in it that, that uh, these other three do. Well, one of them's a proper acoustic obviously. I hope that was informative or at least interesting or at best mildly diverting. I've had fun here making lots of really stupid squeaky noises. Yeah I might make a sensible video next time. Until then, bye!